Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. All right, so guys, we haven't seen too much movement in the space. This feels like an ongoing theme, unfortunately. Uh, today, Bitcoin is trading at about 26,000, so not too much difference since we saw that downturn on uh, Friday, August the 18th. Uh, we haven't really seen any um, any reason for bullish momentum. Volume is up a little bit, however, uh, price not really moving, and uh, you know that is consistent with the rest of the market. We've got XRP right now trading just above where it was trading yesterday. So today, let's place that on there, about 52.1. So again, not too much movement, lower volume down there for XRP. One thing I did wanna bring up though, CryptoCon posted this, Bitcoin is seven months and 22 days from its next projected halving date. And so guys, this is the next thing that we uh, really should be paying attention to with regards to the halving. And uh, for those of you guys who may not have experienced a halving before, well guys, this is what we should be paying attention to now. So bringing up the last two cycles here, relative cycle position from September, 2019, uh, that's where we were back in 2019. And uh, like I've said in former videos, 2023 is very similar to 2019 in terms of uh, where we are in the cycle. And so 2019, we did see a bit of a dip before an upturn. Now, let's not forget the beer flu. That was a black swan event. So you saw this dip for Bitcoin back then, but that affected entire markets. If we go back to 2015, you guys can see a slow trajectory to the upside right before the halving. And then after the halving, guys, that's when we start going parabolic. Same thing happened in 2020. Then we reached the peak in 2021. So where are we today? Well, seven months, 22 days away from the next halving and uh, what to expect guys? Well, a mixed bag, perhaps some sideways momentum, perhaps, uh, I mean, I hope there's not another black swan event. However, anything is possible. Hopefully we do see something a little more like this, a rally, a uh, sideways rally into the happening versus a downside and rally into the happening. Nevertheless, uh, I mean, the downside would give us another opportunity to accumulate more cryptocurrencies. We have seen XRP whales moving large quantities of XRP. This one courtesy of Ian Bins here on Twitter. And as per whale alert down here, let me just go to the tweet here. 29.3 million XRP worth about $15.1 million USD was transferred from an unknown wallet to Bitstamp. Uh, presently, XRP price is recovering from that support level, uh, but we have seen a big move. In the meantime, the trial between Ripple and the SEC is anticipated to occur around the end of April or mid-May. So this is uh, that second half. The timing aligns with the court notification from both the SEC and Ripple Labs, along with CEO Brad Garlinghouse and executive chairman Chris Larson, who cited their unavailability in the second quarter of 2024. So moves are continuing to be made. We're still seeing uh, large quantities of XRP moving. And uh, as you guys can see, this is going to the Bitstamp exchange. So it could be that this transfer did have to do with an ODL transaction. I mean, Bitstamp uh, does continue to be one of Ripple's longstanding partners for on-demand liquidity. So it is important to uh, make note of, uh, you know, the exchanges that these transactions are going through. Nevertheless, wanted to thank Ian Bins just for posting that. Now, JP Morgan guys, they see limited downside for crypto near term after Bitcoin's recent route. So the recent sell-off in the crypto markets is likely near an end with long position liquidations largely behind us. Guys, this quoted from a research report by JP Morgan, the fading of some positive legal and regulatory news induced a wave of recent selling that was uh, still reverberating through the unwinding. But this appears to be close to finished, okay? The decline in open interest, a number of unsettled and active futures contracts trading on exchanges typically indicates a price trend is losing strength. As a result, we see limited downside for crypto markets over the near term. So another uh, argument to suggest that, uh, you know, the price of here, let's bring up Bitcoin again. The price of crypto uh, followed by Bitcoin is going to move up once again. Let's not forget, we have not broken any lower lows here. We're still making higher lows. And so if this trend is weakening, that could mean a potential new high is on the horizon. Let's also not forget earlier in the summer, Bitcoin got a burst from several developments seen as positive for the industry, most notably traders uh, took heart from a flurry of applications led by BlackRock to launch what would be the first U.S. exchange traded fund uh, tied to the spot price of the token. So the BlackRock news also very, very positive, guys. And then there was the meeting in Jackson Hole, which I talked a little bit about yesterday. I will link that video up here in the top right hand corner. Wall Street Bulls here posting this, guys. Christine Lagarde came out and made a statement. Guys, listen to this. Hello to all of you. And I would like to share this magnificent panorama that is behind me. It is the setting of the Jackson Hole conference that takes place every year. It is a little bit like the Sintra of the West, except it's been around for longer. 
Many central bank governors, many academics, many experts in monetary policy and on the economy in general uh, will be gathering for two days and we will talk about the current situation, the major shifts that we are seeing, the major breaks and how we can best respond with good policies that will actually help bring inflation back to 2%. This is the goal, this is the mission. We're not done yet, we are working hard but we also have to compare notes and share our views with others so that we can have really the highest level of confidence that we are taking everything into account. But this is a very inspiring place to do it. So they claim they're looking to bring inflation back down. I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, this was a bit of an emergency Jackson Hole retreat policy symposium, considering we just recently had the BRICS Summit 2023 coming down, looking to crush the US dollar, guys. More on that in a minute, because there's a lot of other things going on in the United States, specifically the US just introduced a tax proposal that could kill DeFi as we know it. So decentralized finance, a concept created by the crypto industry that could pose a threat or rather that does pose a threat to the U.S. economy. And so the U.S. Treasury and the IRS just released proposed cryptocurrency regulations that may deem DeFi applications like Uniswap, OneInch, Curve, MetaMask, etc. to be brokers and be forced to implement KYC, guys. So here is what just recently came out. The proposed rules would also apply to either digital assets such as non-fungible tokens, uh, and they would apply to so-called decentralized finance platforms. Okay, these are platforms which use software to link crypto buyers and sellers directly rather than routing the orders through a company such as Coinbase. So you can see what they're trying to do here. Choke off the on-ramps, the off-ramps. Uh, you know, they've been trying very, very hard to uh, regulate the exchanges once they realize, okay, going after every single cryptocurrency is just not feasible. We got to focus on the exchanges, but then pops up decentralized finance. So now look what they're doing here. Uh, Coin Bureau also just uh, commenting on this. The only silver lining here is that it doesn't go into effect until 2025. So with regards to this statement, the U.S. Treasury Department has released its guidance for crypto brokers, and they mentioned DeFi and NFT protocols here. Doesn't go into effect until 2025. Well, hopefully we will be at the top or very, very close to the top of the next bull run by then. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get away with making some good profits this time around, guys. Again, I'm opening up my portfolio on my Patreon, patreon.com slash working money channel. I've thrown in $10,000 and I might add more. Uh, still checking to see if there's some coins. Some of you guys have been giving me some suggestions too. So I'm going to be looking into some more coins and give you guys insight on what I'm going to be trading. And I'm going to be putting those trades up on my Patreon in real time. I'm basically going to make the trade and within uh, a few minutes, probably 10 max. I will be posting the videos there. So if you guys are interested in that, patreon.com slash working money channel. It is interesting because DeFi was uh, you know, one of those last boons for us. Who knows how this is going to go down anyway. 2025, that is the silver lining. More development, guys, is being made on the XRP ledger. This one courtesy of Sento Sumo Saba here on Twitter. Congratulations to all. A big independent builder harnessing the power of the XRP ledger. So Zago, which is a confirmed XRPL partner, they have said it here, exciting news at Zago. We have introduced six new currencies. Users can now transact in the US dollar, the Hong Kong dollar, the Japanese yen, the Singapore dollar, the New Zealand dollar, and the Bahraini Denaire guy, so here is the statement. In a strategic move to enhance accessibility and to cater to the evolving needs, Zago Technologies is thrilled to announce the addition of six new fiat currencies to its unique payment gateway and trade exchange. And I just named those ones down there. Increasing the number of supported currencies is a key milestone in Zago's journey, and it demonstrates the company's commitment to ongoing innovation. Here's a quote, guys, from co-founder Jurgen Kunell. He said, uh, we are excited to introduce the expansion to our gateway as it represents our dedication to providing a versatile and user-friendly platform that meets the needs of our global audience. Uh, and it aligns perfectly with our mission of enabling an all-inclusive approach to moving money across borders quickly, securely, and cost-effectively, of course, guys, all using the X. RP Ledger. So great to hear that news there uh, coming from Ripple partner Zago. Wanted to thank uh, Crypto Eddie just for posting that. Weezy at Nerd Nation Unbox also mentioned this. Okay, there's still so much room for growth on the XRP ledger. As we all know, we are not nearly at capacity. Uh, guys, these are still the early days of XRPL development and utility use cases driven to the XRP ledger. In this article, though, Vitzvin does compare XRP to bus tickets, says XRP is hardly used 
to its capacity. So there was basically this conversation that uh, they were talking about XRP as gas tokens, but VET down here uh, suggests XRP is not a gas token. Gas implies an auction mechanism where you bid with XRP on gas, much like you bid with Ethereum on gas to be included by validators, but you cannot do that on the XRP ledger. So he was just, uh, he wanted to point out the differences there. Uh, that itself can be seen as a utility though. Maybe we need gas, but no incentive is the best incentive, right? Well, that's right. I mean, that's what David Schwartz has been claiming this entire time. Vet emphasized that XRP does not operate using an auction style mechanism where users bid to secure transaction processing a kid to the way Ethereum does. Vitzfin though did comment on this. It is a bid to burn as well on the XRPL. So it is more similar apparently than we had thought. No one ever noticed because the ledger is hardly being used compared to its capacity. But I remember the fees escalated and higher fees would get your transaction in. In times of congestion, higher fees win. Notably fees on the XRPL automatically move to the burn address uh, this approach eliminates instances of span transactions, a different structure from other networks. But Vitzvin here explains, you know, he acknowledges that while XRPL or while the XRPL does not employ auction style bidding for transaction inclusion, there is a mechanism where users can offer higher XRP fees to ensure faster transacting processing. He likens the network operation to a bus system where XRP is the means to access network capacity. Transactions can proceed uh, with, st with standard XRP fees if the network is less crowded. However, during congestion, once we do see uh, you know all that utility flowing through the XRPL users can ensure their transactions are processed ahead of others by paying higher fees so the fact even that Vitzvin is saying uh, you know the XRP ledger is nowhere near capacity just goes to show you uh, how they've built it and what uh, the creators of the XRP ledger assume is going to happen once that real utility does kick in eventually so just giving us some uh, technical facts here uh, in terms of the bid to burn at the end of the day uh, XRP is simply what you use to consume network capacity like bus tickets and if the bus is full you can kick someone out by paying more for a ticket but the bus is usually pretty empty so speculation on the need for bus tickets is basically what is happening here so just to conclude that Vitzvin uh, giving us an idea of how that does work again the techie stuff very interesting I guess we should know uh, at least a little bit on how that works because at the end of the day it's going to be about utility uh, for those long-term holds XRP going to two three maybe even four digits over the years right now though we're still trading in a spec market everything's still moving with Bitcoin but uh, you know it is good to know and keep under our hats for a rainy day anyway wanted to thank Wheezy and Vietz Vind uh, obviously for posting that explanation now I mean trading finance the entire economy everything is shifting guys last week we talked a lot about BRICS the summit that just occurred yesterday uh, we talked a little bit about the Jackson Hole summit and that counteraction to BRICS. Now, here is Greg Manorino in a great clip, guys, that I want to play for you, courtesy of Subjective Views here on Twitter. He says, in my opinion, there will be pain in the short term due to a slow dismantling of the petrodollar by the hands of BRICS. So we have to listen very closely here, guys, what is actually happening to our economy, especially for Americans, okay? Americans, I mean, basically the entire Western world is going to be affected by this. Well, okay, let, let me go on. However, I would not bet against the United States government and its military might. If things happen that upset the natural order, it is by design. Guys, listen to this. I explained to you, we spoke about how um, these oil-rich nations are now making alliances with the BRICS nations. Okay, a lot of you seem to be downplaying the significance of this. I did read through the comments. Do you understand that the U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency because of one reason that is the petrodollar the united states has guaranteed to protect the oil of opec nations and why would they do that well so the petrodollar would exist the petrodollar because of the assurance to to opec nations or oil rich nations that the u.s military would protect that oil they have priced their oil in dollars okay if that goes away so, the the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency goes away and instead of the United States exporting its inflation to the rest of the world you haven't seen anything yet with regard to inflation the way of life that you've come to know here in the United States which is quickly evaporating anyway unless of course you're in the upper echelon of society uh, is going to change and I mean change very very rapidly you have to look at the global stage. I am a macro guy, all right? I do focus on the small things too, but for the most part, it's, it's the macro picture that I kind of focus on. Um, the fact that these oil-rich nations are now joining the BRICS is a direct threat 
to the petrodollar system and the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency. This should be very, very obvious. And what is this going to lead to? Suffering, pain, death, and war. And more than likely a black swan event or some outlying thing. Who knows what they're going to do to us, but they have a lot more in store for us. Again, as we go from crisis to crisis to crisis to crisis. That's how we function these days. Can't have anything normal anymore. Okay, so Greg Manorino here suggesting we could in fact see a black swan event. Let me just go back to what we were talking about at the top of the video. The beer flu black swan event during this period of time before the having. Well, now Greg Manorino is saying that it is in fact possible. So um, maybe we'll see a structure like this. But guys, at the end of the day, the math is the math Bitcoin is going to have. And since we're still in a uh, it's still in a spec market, the rest of cryptos are likely going to move along with Bitcoin and uh, likely we will see a high by mid to late 2025. So guys, now the reaccumulation period market is low. And again, you can see what I'm going to be trading on my Patreon, patreon.com slash working money channel. So the petrodollar too, okay, in jeopardy. Is it any surprise that India just bought 1 billion barrels of oil from the United Arab Emirates with rupees for the first time ever? So our first example of the petrodollar not being used in July report surfaced that India and the UAE have inked an agreement uh, that allowed the BRICS member to use rupees instead of US dollars when trading with the Middle Eastern nations. And uh, as we all noted here, Digital Perspectives punctuated this with so it begins. Last week, the two nations appear to have started trading using their local currencies after energy company India Oil made payments in rupees for purchasing 1 million barrels of oil from the state-owned Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. Uh, so guys, again, you know, all part and parcel to where we're seeing this. So this was uh, from July, but now that we've got, uh, you know, that new news, what was it? Four out of six uh, of the top oil producers are now BRICS nations. And uh, I, we were talking about this in a video the other day. So a large percentage of that is concentrated uh, with those BRICS nations. Now, Clint also posted this, guys. This happened in Jackson Hole. A reminder of where the U.S. stands with all this. Jerome Powell on Fox Business News, guys, listen to this. We are navigating by the stars under cloudy skies. That was Jay Powell waxing lyrically. And it's clear his affinity for Grateful Dead comes shining through, right? I mean, think of the line. It's not too dissimilar from that, that one classic dead uh, song, Ripple. There is a road, no simply, high, no simply highway between the dawn and the dark of night. All right, so Charles Payne here on Fox Business commenting on the Grateful Dead connection. Again, Jerome Powell, a self-proclaimed Grateful Dead fan, quoting lyrics here, navigating the stars through the cloudy skies, guys, which brings me back to that original Ripple Riddler video from three years ago, actually four years ago now, October 2019, XRP born of stars. Now, guys, I'm not going to play you the video because there is some copyrighted music, uh, but if you are new to the community, if you weren't here in 2019, Bearable Guy was not the only Riddler in the space. The Ripple Riddler was also very prominent, and this born of stars video was very popular at a point in time. So, navigating the stars through the cloudy skies. You even heard Charles Payne talk about the Grateful Dead song Ripple. And do you guys remember Ripple's 404 page? This one from a Reddit post from back in uh, 2020. If we bring this up, okay, this is what Ripple's 404 page used to look like. Uh, you who choose to lead must follow, but if you fall, you fall alone. If you should stand, then who's to guide you? If I knew the way, I would take you home. And so another Grateful Dead connection to the Ripple song. Jerome Powell, Navigating the Stars, this old XRP riddle, Born of Stars, from the Ripple Riddler here, again, from 2019. Some very, very interesting connections here. The other thing that I did want to note was that uh, if you go to ripple.com, whoops, and put in a, uh, I don't know, funny money, put in a bogus link here, their 404 page has now changed. So the page you are looking for does no longer exist. Head back to ripple.com to choose a new path. So they have actually changed their 404 page. Again, it used to look like this. I don't know why they would do it. Maybe wanting to throw us off the scent of the Ripple Grateful Dead connection. Things that make you go, hmm, on top of it all, guys. When that Born of Stars riddle did come out, XRP Riddler Archive here on Twitter posted this thread, okay? Ice Nine, and we've talked about Ice Nine too. Jim Rickards' famous prediction. I did a video on that uh, relatively recently. I will link it up here in the top right-hand corner. Here he says, we hear occasionally an XRP Riddler and insider lore about the quick economic reset, guys. And I feel like 
we are getting closer than ever to this, you know, with BRICS and the new reserve currency, where a new global financial system would be put in place centered around XRP. In this thread, I'd like to take a look at if that could potentially happen. Let's look at a few instances uh, where it's mentioned by alleged insiders. Uh, so Yo-Yo, he, he mentioned that a reset was coming with banks forced to use digital currencies in the aftermath. And guys, all the supporting evidence is here. Kendra Hill put up a post titled Reset, with the only content being an image of a pure black square. In This is a Time for Change, her post refers to short-term financial pain under another post. So guys, short-term financial pain reminding you this was from 2019. Now we're seeing increased inflation. You know, the price of groceries have gone up. Everyday living is a lot more difficult. So did they predict this before the beer flu? Hmm. Ripple Riddler hints at a reset born of stars. Again, going back to born of stars here, when a burning clock resets to the 12 o'clock position uh, and Ham Eggs and Sam analyzed the video and concluded this, the Ripple Riddler commented video below, nice one Sam appearing to confirm now has been deleted. So guys, uh, I believe this was the video, but I believe uh, Sam's uh, YouTube page, yeah, is no longer available. So unfortunately, we do not have that video available, but it is looking like the US is starting to realize something needs to give. Are we going to implement Ripple and XRP sooner than later? Again, more things that make me go, hmm, that's just my opinion, though. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.